As we still await North Korea's second attempt to launch its first ever spy satellite, South Korea has been able to retrieve a large piece of North Korean rocket debris from the Yellow Sea, 15 meters long and two and a half meters in diameter. And so, of course, this is raising hopes of being able to discover more about that first North Korean rocket that failed during flight late last month. If you look at these images of the rocket released by South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff, you can get a sense of its size and shape, believed to be the second stage of the rocket and half its entire length. And you can notice all those ropes tied all around it, as well as the word chonma and the image of a flying horse. The South Korean Navy deployed specially trained divers, two salvage vessels, an auxiliary submarine rescue ship, as well as aircraft in a painstaking operation that actually began on the day of the North's launch. That's because South Korea initially had this rocket part in its grasp on May 31st, but the flotation bags that were hastily attached were not up to the task and it sank to the sea floor at a depth of 75 meters. It's been an arduous operation because of poor underwater visibility and fast currents, among other obstacles. Imagine being a diver, going down, but only being able to see 50 centimeters in front of you. But at 8.50 p.m. Thursday, the South finally had it lifted back above the surface. Just a Chinese vessel was reportedly nearby, possibly conducting its own search. As we reported earlier, China appears to have been racing with South Korea to find North Korean rocket debris, quite possibly on behalf of the North to protect its space and military technology from falling into South Korean hands. Pyongyang and Beijing will recall how back in 2012, South Korean officials were able to work with the US to assess the sophistication of North Korean rocket tech after retrieving part of the Unha-3 rocket. There's been speculation until now about the latest North Korean rocket, the Cholima-1. There was optimism that this large piece of debris would offer important rocket engine clues, for example. So this was a hazardous operation for the divers and crew members, particularly with the sheer difficulty involved and the ever lurking risk that the rocket part would again slip away due to unexpected complications. We'll be keen to find out more details after a joint examination with the US on land in Pyeongtaek, some 60 kilometers south of Seoul, where there's a significant American military presence. Meanwhile, we've been told the military will continue a separate mission to search for other rocket parts, including the third stage and purported satellite, which North Korea calls the Maligyong-1. While those efforts continue, you can help us carry on our efforts with a like, a subscribe if you haven't done so, and by spreading the word so more people can discover our content.